So hopefully this one will just be a quick one about some transformations. Uh, mostly since the um, initial value takes care of the multiplicative transformation, um, these are just going to be horizontal and vertical shifts and then some reflections at the end. So I'm just going to kind of give you one example of each so you can review and look at it and it won't be too, too long. So let's first look at uh, a equals, uh, excuse me, y equals a to the x minus 2. So I've set up here this generic function, but I'm going to have to put in some letters, uh, some additional sliders. This one's uh, governing the a value. And uh, let's assume that a is always the positive, or excuse me, greater than 1 version, so it's exponential growth, knowing that I could change it to exponential decay and it'll work the same way, right? So I'm going to alter this so that it's minus h, oops, not there, minus h, why is it not doing this thing here? Okay, x, x minus h, I think I want to have a little coefficient here, so let's call that little b, let's not worry about b too, too much. And then I'm going to put minus k over here but hopefully we know that that's the same and I'll change it when we get to it. So uh, I, I kind of want these out of the way and the function to be at the bottom for I don't know why. Uh, so our function looks like this. Right now this is h is set to zero, which means we have no horizontal shift, I hope you recall. That b is a one, so it's just x. And if I set k equal to zero, oops, then we have no vertical shift, okay? So if I'm looking at y equals a to the x minus 2, y equals a to the x minus 2, then h becomes 2, right? Because the minus sign, as I tried to say in class, is part of the function. So if I change this to the number 2, what's happening to my function? So from now on, when I say a to the x minus 2, when I give you the function, you should hit pause, unless you understand immediately what's going to happen. And let me zoom in a little bit, okay? So if I change h to 2, then that's going to be a shift to the right two units, okay? So we used to go through 0, 1. Now we go through 2, 1, all right? Now I'm going to reset this, and we're going to look at y equals a to the x plus 7. So we'll change this to 0. I don't like this going stepping so much. Let's just go to 1 because I'm going to mess with the integers. And so if I go to 0, here we are going through 0, comma 1. And so this is my generic function. It has a base of 2. X is, uh, so B is 1, H is 0, K is 0. So really I just have this function, Y equals A to the X. And maybe I can leave that function there as our ghost function. Let's make it a dotted and make it black. Okay, so that's my ghost function, the one that my, my parent function, and this is the transformed function. So now I said uh, y equals a to the x plus 7. So a to the x plus 7 is, is equal to a to the x minus negative 7. So what is the value of h? The value of h is negative 7. That represents a shift to the left 7 units. And there we are shifted to the left seven units. And I'm going through negative seven comma one, negative seven comma one instead of zero comma one. Because I changed my x value, shifted it left seven units. So instead of it being at zero, it's going to be at x equals negative seven. All right. So now let's reset it and look at the next red function here. Y minus five equals a to the x. Y minus five equals a to the x. So now h is equal to 0, and I'm going to change this k to be integers as well. Okay, so I'm saying y minus 5, so k is equal to 5, right? Because y minus 5, so k is equal to 5, and that's the sh vertical shift up 5 units. So instead of going through 0, 1, I'm going through 0, 6, because I took 1 and added 5 to it. I can also think of it as this thing, y equals a to the x plus 5. That's like adding 5 to both sides. That equals 0, and I just get y. 
and now my k is over on the right hand side and this is why this plus sign you, you used to think of it as maybe you still think of it as just it's correct but it's actually the opposite of what it should be if it was on the other side okay now let's cha change k back to zero and look at the next red function y equals a to the x minus seven so now my k value is actually negative seven and so that's a downshift of seven units, zero comma one down to zero comma negative six. Again, how many units? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm just grabbing my curve and shifting it down seven units. Grabbing my curve and shifting it down seven units. Okay? Let's go to the purple versions of the of my transformations. These purple versions have two things. So again, as I said earlier in an earlier video, when you look at that, hit pause and think about what's going to happen there. Is it going to be a shift to the right and or, or left? Is it going to be a shift up or down? Um, and so we're going to, I'm going to play with that. Make sure you hit pause, sort out what's going to happen, and then check to see if your answer is correct. So this three is a shift to the right. I'm sorry, it's a shift to the left three units because I'm entering a negative three right because X minus negative three and then this shift this negative seven oops that's a wrong one here we go three and this shift of negative seven is a shift down seven units and so my zero comma one moved all the way over there it shifted to the left three units and down seven units okay Let's go back and zero this out, zero this out, and look at the next purple. Uh, H is now three, and K stayed at negative seven, so it didn't change. That's really cool. Um, and so my, my anchor point is down here at one comma negative six. Oh, my cat's climbing on me, hi sweetie. Um, you can't see it, but that's okay. You don't need to see her. Maybe you'll see her during the zooming sometime the remainder of the semester. Now let's look at the green. Y equals negative A to the X. So if I change this to a negative sign, right? If I change this to a negative sign, what's going to happen to my function? I'm hoping you're thinking that anything that I put in there, I'm going to turn around or flip over. So in other words, all of these positive values, all these positive y values get inverted and become negative y values. So that's just like me doing the following. And so my blue, as compared to the parent, is just reflected about the x-axis. Okay. Now, what if I try to do the same thing up here with the negative x? Um, this is my progression, as I've done a couple times before. Um, I'm going to split this exponent up to be negative 1 times x. It might be easier to see with the number there. So let's say I have y equals 2 to the negative x, which is what we have, except this b is not negative yet, right? So um, and I'll have to put a negative sign in front of that b. But So that's negative x. Well, I'm going to split it into negative 1 and x in this manner. Why? Because if I deal with these two numbers, negative 1 times x becomes negative x. So this is equivalent to that. Now, what's 2 to the negative 1? Well, remember, 2 to the negative 1 means it's inverted, and I can write it as 1 half. Negative, uh, 2 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 half. So really, I have an exponential decay. What, this, what does this negative uh, coefficient in front of the x actually means? Uh, a one way to interpret it is it's a reflection about the y-axis. Just like the negative sign in front of this is a reflection about the x-axis, negative sign in front of this is a reflection about the y-axis. So we'll see when I change this b to a negative right there, I get a reflection about the y-axis. All of these points in my parent function flipped over here, and all these points down here flipped over there. And that's it for transformations. Hopefully this was short enough and this wasn't so painful for you.